May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Welcome to the new face of worship as we uh, gradually prepare to gather ourselves back into the building here at St. John's. Um, The plans for our return to worship have been slightly delayed according to the necessities of having custodians in place and uh, other things ready. But we are on track for a return to worship next Sunday, August 23rd. Uh, As by way of introduction, um, I would walk you through the, the process of what that will look like when you arrive at worship next week. If you indeed are able or choose to return with us, there will be, uh, we will continue to record worship and have it available for those who are unable to be present in person. So all of our entry to the church will be through the Fifth Avenue doors, the blue doors on the Fifth Avenue side of the building. You'll be greeted and, and asked to wear a mask. There is sanitizer available at every usher's station, which includes one at the back door, one at the bottom of the ramp near the washrooms, where you'll be invited to sign in uh, so that we can track uh, who has been in the building in case uh, there is any contact with, uh, with uh, COVID. And you will see one more usher at the entrance to Taylor Hall, which is where our worship will be uh, conducted for the foreseeable future. Uh, And you'll be invited to take your seat. Now the seats are arranged in a different manner than we're used to seeing when we meet in Taylor Hall. We will be seated at appropriate physical distance. There are Chairs arranged for couples and for singles. And the worship will proceed as usual. And then following the worship, you'll be invited to leave through the same doors. And uh, unfortunately, as we're unable to gather for coffee or social uh, activities, um, we would encourage you to head straight outside and go about your Sunday business. And that is the news for the week. We hope that uh, as we learn again how to do this, that you will be patient with us, that you will be encouraged by a move toward a different way of doing things, and as always, that you will be prayerfully and carefully considering the ways in which we gather, the ways in which we worship, and the ways in which we live out our faith. Today we gather once more online, and so I invite us to prepare ourselves for worship as we gather here, there, and everywhere in the sight of God. Let us worship God together. Friends, as we gather here in the sight of God, as we prepare to offer ourselves in worship and consider again the word that God has given us, let us join in singing our opening hymn uh, led again this morning by Allison and Pamela. Uh, Our opening hymn, Come, Let Us Sing. Let's praise God together.
Friends, we have been called together by the Spirit of God. We have gathered in praise. Let us join our hearts, minds, and spirits in prayer. God of all mystery, we thank you and praise you for the beauty that surrounds us, for the wonder that is this world we inhabit, for the fellowship we find for the love we know, and for this opportunity to gather in worship. Help us as we gather to give thanks for your faithfulness. Help us as we gather to remember those in need. Help us as we gather to hear your word and to take it into us. Help us, we pray, in a world that makes no sense to follow your guiding wisdom, your compassionate spirit, your loving son. For we are called by his name and we are gathered for his sake. Amen. Our first encounter with a word from God today is found in the Psalm 67. And I invite you to encounter that word with me as we share in the psalm responsively. O oh God, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon the earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere God. I've chosen today a passage from an Old Testament book that's rarely encountered in our lectionary cycles, but which seems to me appropriate for the time and the situation. We'll be reading from the book of Ezra today, and Ezra and Nehemiah are two books from the Old Testament that go hand in hand. They together recount different experiences of Israel's return to Jerusalem after years of exile and imprisonment. The enemy has become the benefactor and sent them back to the city of God. It is a remarkable piece of the history of Israel. And it is part of our history too because we understand exile and return, we understand a longing for the familiar. We understand, especially now, what it means to us to to return. And so, the first chapter of Ezra will speak to us, I think, in new and exciting ways. As we prepare to hear and encounter that word today. Let us once again gather in prayer. Our prayer for illumination is a familiar sung prayer 
led today by Daryl and Allison. Be still and know that I am God. Gracious God, as we gather before your word today, open us to the word that is in us, around us, and before us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Ezra chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Together, let us listen for a word from God. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, in order that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up the spirit of King Cyrus of Persia, so that he sent a herald throughout all his kingdom, and also in a written edict declared, Thus says King Cyrus of Persia, The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, And he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem in Judah. Any of those among you who are his people, may their God be with them, are now permitted to go up to Jerusalem in Judah and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. And let all survivors, in whatever place they reside, be assisted by the people of their place with silver and gold, with goods and with animals, besides free will offering for the house of God in Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, I bring you this word. Amen. So between the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, we have uh, an account of something miraculous. An exiled, imprisoned people are suddenly and miraculously allowed to return to their homeland. King Cyrus of Persia is the hero of this piece. He has proclaimed himself a friend of God and decided that as a friend of God and God's chosen ruler of the known world, he should return the Israelite people to their proper place. And not just opening the gates and letting them go, but sending them back with all of the plunder that his predecessors had taken from the temple of Jerusalem. 
There is, is in Ezra a vast accounting of the hardware and the jewelry and the, the linens and the people. According to Ezra, nearly 50,000 of them, not counting the women and children. And so Ezra and Nehemiah together tell the story of this return to the thing that Israel has longed for. They return to a ruined city. They return to a desecrated temple. They return to a palace in ruins and are told to get on with their lives. Now, they had been told this before in exile. They had been told, worship the Lord your God, continue your habits, marry and bury and enjoy life, be who God has called you to be in this strange place. And they clearly have done that because they still maintain a habit of worship. They maintain habits of faithfulness. The priests and the Levites and the singers are all intact. They know their business. And they have been the people of God even in this so-called ungodly place. But now, now they have a chance to return to the place they love to the place that they believe God first called home. God's chosen place for God's chosen people on God's chosen mountain, and all will be right with the world. And they return. And Ezra is the the economist in telling this story. This is how many people, and this is how much gold, and this is how long it took, and these are the ways we worshipped. Nehemiah, on the other hand, talks about the difficulties. We posted guards, and we rebuilt the walls, and we withstood the opposition. But the bottom line is, they're back where they want to be. They're back where they've longed to be, doing the things that they believe God needs them to do. It's remarkable. It is a remarkable story. And we know from the scope of history that it doesn't last, that God's people will again be scattered and invaded and oppressed. But there is this moment, this shining moment, where it looks like everything will be back to normal normal. What might that be like? We think that we understand exile. Historically, we, we recognize that there have been people who have suffered and longed for a return to something. Every generation has its moment of truth where the going gets tough and then the tough get going. Every generation has that point in its history where they say this is the worst thing that's ever happened to us. When will it ever be normal again? There's a fairly stiff competition right now amongst opinion makers and opinion takers to declare the year 2020 as, quote, the worst year in history. And I know that feels like the truth to us right now. But I'm not so sure. I think it is the worst year in our present experience, perhaps, with a few exceptions, with the exception of those who lived and fought through the war or the depression. 
maybe this is the worst year we have experienced with the biggest waterfall of events of mischief and misery. But in the scope of history, this is just another year with just another set of challenges to overcome. And normal, normal will be what it is when we decide how to live again. Do we resonate with God's people down the ages who have been in exile? Maybe. Maybe. This is our place, after all. This is the house that God built. This is our sacred ground here at 504 Second Street Southeast. And we have not been here for a long time. This is the first time I dared to record a service from here because I wanted to get all of us accustomed to what might be, myself included. But has this been an exile? Or has this been just another example of how God walks with God's people wherever they are? Babylon invades and the people are dragged away against their will and the temple is destroyed and God was with them. And before that, the people moved to Egypt with Joseph to survive a famine and the years turn into generations and the welcomed refugees become unwilling slaves and God had not forgotten them. And the Romans come and do what Romans do and the people suffer and mutter and plan revolution. But God had not abandoned them. In fact, in the person of Jesus, we learn that God is not only willing, but able to walk with them, with us. Whatever the circumstances, exile or enchantment, good times or bad times, there is never a time that God is not with us, and that's the normal that we should desire. Normal has nothing to do with a certain kind of ritual in a certain place at a certain time of day. Normal for the people of God, normal for the followers of Jesus, is remembering that God is among us, that the Spirit guides us that Jesus is risen and thus has overcome even the worst the world can offer in order that disciples and friends of God can say here we are and our normal is the company of God will our return to worship being normal? I, I assure you it will not. It will be awkward. It will be uncomfortable. It will not be what you remember. But God is with us. God is here already. God is with you now, trying to show you what normal is is what normal can be. Normal for the followers of Jesus, normal for the people of God, is when lives are lived with compassion and empathy and hope and faith and love. 
normal is waiting for us. Whatever the world says is happening, whatever the world defines as normal, we have always inhabited a new normal. Thanks be to God. Amen. Beloved, let us pray. God of all goodness, it is here that we find our deepest peace, here before you, here in your presence, guided by your spirit, following your son. Our hearts, our minds, and our lives have been in upheaval for so long we've forgotten what normal is like. But you have always been with us. You have always been waiting to take us by the hand and to show us that all is not lost. We thank you. We thank you for the moments of grace that we have found in these uncertain weeks and months and years. We thank you for the witness of your son who walked through this life with his friends, who walked open-eyed to pain and death, and who walked through death to life eternal, and who stands ready to welcome us. We acknowledge, O oh God, that in these last months and weeks and days we have been wavering between hopefulness and hatefulness. We acknowledge before you our sin, our failure to see that you have intended nothing but good for us. We have been ill-treated and we have treated others shamefully. Forgive us. Restore us. Change us in the image of your Son that we might once again follow him in joy and hope. We cannot know what the future brings, O oh God. And as much as we want to know, we here profess that we trust in one thing, that not only do you wait for us in the future, but you walk with us in the present. We give thanks for that good news and offer it as, as our prayer of hope in the name of the one who taught us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against you. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from the times of trial kingdom, power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As we near the end of our time together today, let's join once more in song. Thanks to Allison and Pamela and Daryl for having provided so much recorded music for our benefit and for our shared praise. Our closing hymn today, Come Sing, O Church in Joy. Let us praise God together. Sing, old church.
Friends, as this time of worship together comes to a close, I commend you to a week of hope, to days of faith and love and joy. Go into the world in safety to love and serve God wherever you are led, and may grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God the Father. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen.